people all over this world. Yeah, people all over this world. Say people all over this world, they're looking for Jesus. Hello, my friend, it's me, Bishop John R. Stevenson. I'd like to welcome you to another edition of It's a Word Thing. Father, we're so grateful for this time that you've given us to spend together in studying the Word of God today. We ask in the name of Jesus that by your Holy Spirit you would reveal truth to us, <laughs> deep and precious truth to us uh, according to your, your Word, your will, and your promises to your people. God, I pray for everybody that's viewing the telecast today. I pray in the name of Jesus that something will be said, God, something will be said uh, via your Holy Spirit that will change the life of those who are viewing to where they will never, ever be the same again. Father, I thank you again for the anointing that rests upon my life to preach and teach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with power and authority. I give you all glory and I give you all honor for everything that's going to transpire during, the, during this telecast today. Again, I pray a special prayer for those who are viewing the telecast today, that they will get a deep revelation and insight uh, through the teaching and the preaching of the Word of God today. We give you glory and praise for it now, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, my friend. Again, we have been discussing uh, this being the year of a new thing, uh, the year of the 10 times better astronomical growth and increase. And we've been talking about the miraculous power of God operating in your life. There are many things that have been said, but on our last uh, broadcast together, the Lord had me to talk to you about some things that the enemy has put in place because we've also been talking about this entering into the rest, that God said it's time for you to rest, and he wants you to enter into his rest so that you can have the rest of what God has for you. The joy of the Lord is my strength, my friend. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And so he had me to say that the enemy has placed, watch now, there are three things that the enemy has placed in front of the entry of the resting place of God and the rest of what God has for you. Watch this. He said, he said the enemy has placed, watch now, on God at the entrance of his resting place, fear, doubt, and unbelief. Fear, doubt, and unbelief is blocking the entryway, watch this, to the resting place and to the rest of what God has for you. Not only do you have God standing at the entrance, but once you get in, the, <laughs> he, he said the enemy is also guarding, watch this, the rest of what God has for you. And while I was in my quiet time, friend, while I was in my prayer time, about 1.45 this morning, yeah, 1.45 this morning, as I was looking over the Word of God and looking at what it was that God wanted me to talk to you about today, <clears throat> and while I was in my prayer time looking over the Word of God, the Holy Spirit dropped this in my spirit for you. He said, your healing, your breakthrough, I wrote it down, He said, your healing, your deliverance, and your breakthrough. Watch now, he say, it's here already. <laughs> Friend, he say, it's here already, but watch what he said. He said, they are waiting, watch this, they are just looking for a believer, someone who will dare to believe God for the healing, the deliverance, <laughs> and the breakthrough. Come on, friend, listen to what he said. He said, the, the healing, the deliverance and the breakthrough is here. He said, but he's looking for somebody that can dare to believe God for the healing, for the breakthrough and for the deliverance. Because remi remember now, he said, he said that fear, doubt, and unbelief is standing in the way. Oh, this is good. He said fear, fear, doubt, and unbelief is standing in the way. Watch this, friend. He said now, he said, remember that fear, doubt, and unbelief is blocking the entry of God's rest and the rest of what God has for you. And he had me to write this. He said, your faith will cause fear, doubt, and unbelief to loose it and let it go. Oh, that's good, friend. That's good. He said, your fear, <clears throat> your faith, rather, your faith 
will cause fear, doubt, and unbelief to loose it and let it go. To loose what, friend? To loose your healing, to loose your breakthrough, and to loose your deliverance. He said, your faith, your faith will cause fear, doubt, and unbelief to loose it and let it go. That's good stuff right there, friend. So, so God is saying to you, friend, we're getting ready to get into some scripture because I want to read some scripture to you so you see what it looks like. Watch this. You know, the Bible says, for God is love. God is love, right? But, but watch this. Just like God is love, Jesus is faith. And by revelation, we know that to be true. God is love. Jesus is faith. The Bible says that we've been given the measure of faith. We've been given the measure of faith. Who is the measure? Faith is not a something. Faith is a someone. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing. Watch now. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the book of Revelation says, watch this, said Jesus' name is the word of God. So faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And Jesus' name, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, is Revelation 19. He said that Jesus' name is the word of God. So if faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, and Jesus is the, is the word of God that became flesh and dwelt among us, come on family, that make Jesus our faith. And so he says, watch this, he says, so, so all fear, doubt, and unbelief is waiting on, watch this, because they know outside of faith, they, gonna, they can stay where they are. But your faith in God, your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ will cause fear, doubt, and unbelief to loose it and let it go. Your faith will cause fear, doubt, and unbelief to move out of the way. It will automatically, your faith will automatically move fear, doubt, and unbelief out of the way because faith is more powerful than fear because Jesus is more powerful than fear since he's the faith. Watch now. Faith is more powerful than fear, doubt, and unbelief. And so let's take a look at what it looks like for the enemy to have on God. This is good stuff, family. I pray that you're praying for Bishop right now. Because if we're going to, if we're going to experience this year of 2019, walking in the new thing, the 10 times better, astronomical growth and increase, wherever you are in that, wherever you fit in the dynamics of that, you have to get with the Lord and find out where it is. Because he told me to tell Red Sea Baptist Church, God house of deliverance, my friend. He said, you're in the 10 times better. And I, I appreciate him telling me that so the people know what to look for. <laughs> So the people know, friends, so the people know what to look for. So we're not expecting something that we're not supposed to have. He said, you tell your people that they're in the 10 times better. And so I told him, and they was excited about it. So, okay, 10 times better. But it's something that 10 times better do for you. It puts you in the middle of a new thing in astronomical growth and increase. <laughs> And listen, listen, we know one act from God can take me to astronomical growth and increase. Surely if, if I get into the 10 times better, friends, surely if I come into the 10 times better, a new thing is going to be involved in it. You, you can't be in a better place than, than the 10 times better because it puts you in the middle of a new thing in astronomical growth and increase. Hallelujah. And so he says, listen, he said he wanted me to say to us that your healing, your breakthrough and your deliverance, whatever it is you need, your financial breakthrough, whatever it is you need, your your. I'm not going to say employment, your career, whatever it is you're needing, uh, the, the Lord told me to tell you, it's here. It's just looking for someone to dare to believe God for it. You have to believe God for it. But I want you to see what it looks like for the enemy to have God's, oh my goodness, around your resting place and the rest of what God has for you. Now, as we move into this, the Bible lets us know that Jesus borrowed a tomb from Joseph of Arapheus. Er, 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 Joseph of Arathamir. Er, uh, and so Jesus was in that tomb for three days and three nights. He rose on the third day. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we have to understand that when I come into the, to the knowledge of that Jesus has rose again, that Jesus lives, our Savior lives, I'll come to a resting place. The, the disciples, they're on the road to Emmaus, and they, they reason together. They're talking about all the events that just took place, and they don't believe that Jesus rose again. 
They don't know where Jesus is, but Jesus walks up on them while they're talking about him, friend. He walks up on them. <laughs> and, and before the night is over, he reveals himself to them. I want to say something to you, friend. I want to say something to you. In the midst of all of what's going on in your life, Jesus is going to walk up on you and you're not going to even know it, but he's going to reveal himself to you in the middle of your situation and your circumstances. No matter what it is that you're going through, friend, Jesus is going to walk up on you just like he walked up on them on the road to Emmaus. And Jesus is going to join in your conversation because, listen, they're having a pity party. We thought that he was going to do this, and we thought that he was that. And some of you are saying that same thing right now. God said this, and God said that. But if you got faith in God, you believe in God, you will believe that what God said is going to come true. But I want to show you what it looks like for, for your resting place and for the rest of what God has for you is being blocked by the enemy. Fear, doubt, and unbelief. I'm going to show you what that looks like. Come with me to Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27, we're going to start at verse number 62. Jesus has been buried. He's been buried. <laughs> and before, before the third day comes, friend, they concerned. They concerned. And so they go, watch now, they, 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 they go to the priest, they go to Pilate, and they tell Pilate, they remind Pilate of what Jesus said. Well, I'm here to remind you of what Jesus said, too. <laughs> Friend, I'm here to remind you of what he said, too, because he said, this is the year of the new thing, the 10 times better and the astronomical growth and increase. Just like they going to remind Pilate, God has sent me to remind you of what God has said to you. He said, if I could just get you to believe, he said, everyone who believed the man of God, everybody who believed what I've said through my man of God, I am going to perform that miracle in their life. I'm going to give them the breakthrough that they need, the healing that they need, the deliverance that they need, the, the whatever it is that they need, that miracle that they need, the power of God is going to operate in your life and give it. All he's looking for is somebody who will believe him. That's what he said. Tell them the healing, the deliverance, the breakthrough is here. I'm just looking for those who would dare to believe what I said. Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 27, starting at verse number 62, because they want to remind, <laughs> this is good, friend. They want to remind Pilate uh, and the priest of what Jesus said. Okay, I'm reminding you, I'm a reminder of you of what Jesus said too. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you and never will I fail you. I want to remind you of what God said too. He said, this is the year that he wants to use to bring you into your new thing. Ten times better, astronomical growth and increase. And all he needs for you to do, my friend, is believe him for it. Fear, doubt, and unbelief is blocking that. Watch what it looks like. This is what it looks like so that you see that they are trying, that the, the fear, doubt, and unbelief is wanting to contain what it is that God, the, the place of rest and the rest of what God has for you. Starting at, we in verse, we in, we in um, Matthew 27, starting at verse number 62. Now the next day that followed it, the day of the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees came together unto Pilate saying, sir, we remember that that deceiver said while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. My goodness, my goodness. Command therefore that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, he is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, Yea, ye have a watch. Go your way, make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulchre sure, sealing the stone and setting the watch. You see, friend, here it is, here it is. They, they want to try to keep what the truth from, from prevailing. And so that's what the enemy want to do to you. He feared doubt and un un unbelief want to keep the truth of what God said from uh, uh, pr prevailing in your life. And you have to dare to believe. You, you have to tell the devil that you believe God, friend, that God has never lied. God has never lied. Just like God didn't lie when he told them that on the third day he would rise again if they tore down the building, friend, they was going to crucify him. He'd be buried and rise again on the third day. And I do believe right now that God is going to perform something in three days for somebody. Something is going to happen in three days, 72 hours. Something 
something is going to something is going to manifest in the life of somebody watching viewing this telecast right here. I'm here to remind you of what God said, friend. I'm here to remind you of what God said. He said, if I can get you to believe, I just need for you to believe the man of God, believe the word that's coming. I'm coming from the, from the Bible, friend. I'm not making things up. I'm just the messenger. I'm the mailman. I'm the one carrying the package for you. And your message is, this is the year, 2019. We're in the third quarter, friend. We're in the third quarter right now. Coming to the end of the first month of the third quarter. And we're about to enter into the second month of the third quarter. Don't let the third quarter get away from you, friend. You let this third quarter get away from you, it's going to be hard for you to recuperate. And God is saying right now, I need for you to start believing what he is saying to you. I need for you to start believing. I'm here to remind you, friend, of what God has said. He said this year, the miraculous power, the miracle working power of God is going to operate in your life. And the only thing that's keeping us from experiencing what God is talking about is unbelief because unbelief stifles the word of God. That means to hold back, to keep back, to keep back. It means to quench. And so God said, he said, tell them, he said the healing, the breakthrough, uh, uh, the deliverance, everything that they need is right here waiting on them. All I need to do, all I'm looking for is those who will dare to believe. He said, and your faith in him will cause fear, doubt, and unbelief to move out of the way, to be removed from the entrance so that you can enter into the place of rest so that you can get the rest of what God has for you. Because until you believe God, friend, until you believe what God is saying, you can't have the rest of it. See, having Jesus is just the beginning of it, friend. That's just the beginning of it. Jesus says in the scripture, he said, no man has given up everything for me that who that will not, who will not inherit, watch this, a hundredfold on this side of glory and then the glory. Yeah, on this side of glory and then eternity, friend. So there are some things that God want to give you on this side of glory. He wants you to experience some things right here on this earth. Why, friend? Because he wants you to be a beacon of light. He wants you to be that conduit that will draw like a moth to a flame. He said that we are a city of lights set up on a hill that can't be healed. He is so that men can see the Lord Jesus Christ, the working of the Lord Jesus Christ, and give glory to the Heavenly Father. And so that's what God wants you to do. Dare to believe, friend. Listen, thank you, Holy Spirit. He reminded me of something right now to remind you of. He said you have to evict fear out of your life. Mm. Because, see, fear, doubt, and unbelief done moved in, and they are standing in the way. They are guarding the entryway. Uh-huh. So that means what's ever in can't come out and can't nothing come in, friend. And so he said what you need to do, watch now. He said you need to put it on notice right now. You need to evict Fear, doubt, and unbelief. He said, because as soon as you do that, friend, as soon as you stand up in your faith, it's going to automatically call fear, doubt, and unbelief to move out of the way so that you can enter into the resting place of God. Faith will put you in that place, friend. And once you start to walk in faith, friend, you can have the rest of what comes with the Lord Jesus Christ. You can have the rest of what comes with the salvation package, friend. I, I hope that you're uh, uh, hearing what God is saying right now and grabbing hold to it with everything that you have. You have to determine in you, friend, that you're not going to allow fear, doubt, and unbelief to stay in your way. You're not going to allow fear, doubt, and unbelief to stand in the way of your progressing in God and you having the things that God wants you to have, my friend. Listen, friend, this is, this is for you today. This is for you today. Everything you need is here. It's waiting for you. All you got to do is believe. Come on, friend, say, just believe. So come on, friend, say, just believe. Because when you believe, friend, when you stand up in your faith, in your most holy faith, when you stand up in your faith, it's going to automatically, friend, it's going to automatically, it's just like when you stand in front of an automatic door, you know the automatic door, you go to H-E-B or Walmart or wherever you go, you get in front of that door and that door automatically open. Well, friend, when you stand up, why? Because you believe the door is supposed to open. When you get in front of the door, it's supposed to open, friend. So God is saying to you right now, my friend, he's saying all I need you to do is stand up in your faith and it's going to open the door to the resting place and to the rest of what God has for you. Friend, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. I want to take you to another verse of scripture. I want to take you to another verse of scripture because I want to show you what it looks like what, what, when you got faith in God, how it will move. You know, the women 
after Jesus was buried, the women on their way, they on their way to, to dress him and to prepare him for the burial. Well, Jesus is already buried, but, but you know, they, they, they thought they had to do something else. No, he's already buried. But they going, they going to embalm him to, to you know how, how they dress people for burial. They going to do this for Jesus, but they're reminded of something. Who's going to roll the stone back? Who's going to move the stone out of the way? That's, watch this, that's the fear, doubt, and unbelief that's standing in front of the resting place and the rest of what God has for them. Because if they can't believe that Jesus rose from the dead, friend, they can't have the rest of what God has for them. So let's go to Mark chapter 16, if you don't mind. I like this right here, friend. I like this right here. Mark chapter 16. Hallelujah, this is good. Mark chapter 16. Let's look at verses uh, 1 through 5. Hallelujah. Because we have to understand, if, if, I, if they can't believe that he's risen from the dead, friend, well, how can they have what, how can they believe anything else that Jesus said if he didn't really raise from the dead? Fear, doubt, and unbelief. They're on the road to Emmaus. Fear, doubt, and unbelief is what kept them from believing. But the Bible also said that they didn't understand the Scripture. They didn't know the Scriptures. Friend, you need to know the Scriptures. What it is that the Scripture has said about Jesus. Yeah, yeah, friend, what Jesus didn't say it. What the Bible says about Jesus, and let's walk in what the Bible says about Jesus. We don't want to talk about the Jesus that the world talking about. We know what the Bible says about Jesus. Let's get in touch with that, that Jesus. We're in Mark chapter 16 because I, I need to look, like, look at what it looks like when that door is open. Watch this. Uh, Mark 16, starting in verse 1. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and uh, Salome, uh, had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. Talking about Jesus. Very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. Now, it's amazing they put that on there, at the rising of the sun, and this is the day that the Son of God rises again. Hallelujah. Verse 3, and they said among themselves, watch now, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? Why is that important, friend? Because that stone represents fear, doubt, and unbelief that's blocking the resting place. Because see, as soon as they get there and see that Jesus has rose again, friend, and they believe what he said, that's going to put them in a place of rest. And once they get into that place of rest, when they see that he's risen, friend, now they can believe him for the rest of what God has for them. Oh, that's good stuff, my friend. <laughs> that's good stuff right there. It'd make me want to run around the building. Verse number four, and when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. Watch now. Th th you got to understand something. In your own little might, friend, in your, not by my might, not by my power, but by thy spirit, says the Lord. In my own might, in my own little strength, friend, I don't have what it takes to move fear, doubt, and unbelief out of my life. I don't have it. I'm not capable. I'm not capable of it, friend. It takes the Lord Jesus Christ to help move fear fear, doubt, and unbelief out of my life. But it takes for me to walk consistently, say that, friend, for me to walk consistently with the Lord. And as I walk consistently with the Lord, he'll show me, watch this, friend, that I can trust him, that I can believe him, friend. Because everything that he's begun, he finished. Philippians 1, 6. He, he says that, that he had the confidence that he has in the Lord, that he has confidence... Have confidence in this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you is faithful, is faithful to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. Friend, I've been sent, yes, by the Lord. I've been sent, led by the Holy Spirit, to remind you of what God said. Just like they want to remind Pilate of what Jesus said, I'm here to remind you what he said as well. Friend, look, when they got there, the stone had been moved. Watch this, verse 5. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. Verse 6, and he said unto them, be, be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. Watch now. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter 
that he goeth before you into Galilee, there shall ye see him as he said unto you. Watch this, friend, watch this. And they went out quickly. I need for you to grab hold to your faith quickly, friend. I need for you to grab hold to your faith quickly so that you don't miss out on what it is that God done promised you. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulcher. For they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. They were afraid because God had said what he said. He did what, exactly what he said, but they didn't know how to, they didn't know how to deal with that, friend. So I'm asking you to quickly put fear out of your life, evict fear, doubt, and unbelief, and fill your life with the faith of God. Stand up in your faith right now so that you can have what God is wanting to do for you, friend. I do believe in 72 hours, in 72 hours, God is getting ready to do something for some of you. I don't know how many of you or which one of you, but in three days, God is getting ready to prove himself. He shouldn't have to, friend, but for some of you, he's going to have to prove himself. For a lot of you, he's going to have to prove himself. 72 hours, friend. I'm telling you right now, I don't know who you are, but in 72 hours, some of you are going to get your healing. Some of you are going to get your deliverance. Some of you are going to get your breakthrough. That career that you need, that financial, God is getting ready to do it, friend. He say he's got to do it because it's time. The time is now. God has got to show himself. He's got to show himself because he want to draw this lost and dying world. And he want to use you, friend. He want to use your life just like he did Obed Eden. He want to use your life for the presence and the glory of God to sit upon your house and on your life so that your neighbors can see that the hand of God is upon you, that the presence of God is upon you, and that God is real. No, no, friend, that God is real. That is a true and living God. And those of us who are in, in, in the faith, in, in the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are in that faith, friend. We are serving the true and living God. The Bible says in 1 John, the Bible says in 1 John that Jesus is the true God. Hallelujah, that Jesus is the true God. Friend, I'm just here to remind you of what he said. It's been a week since we talked, but God told me to come and remind you of what he said, friend. Yeah, the enemy been holding some, some stuff back from you, but God is about to release some stuff 72 hours for some of y'all, you're going to get your breakthrough. I'm, all, I'm just asking that you call KPLE and let them know that you got your breakthrough, your healing or whatever it was. Time is, time is coming close for me, friend, and I hate, to, I hate to depart. I'm having such a wonderful time, but I'm going to have to get out of here. But I want to let you know that Bishop is praying for you, and I thank you for you praying for me. I thank you for praying for me and the love that you show me when you see me. God bless you and may God keep you, my friend. Truly, truly is my prayer for you. Don't forget what Jesus has said and don't forget what God had me to remind you of today. Evict fear, doubt, and unbelief and stand up in your faith and watch God do exactly what he said he was going to do. Till I see you next time, my friend. Bye-bye now. We love you. Bye-bye. People all over this world, yeah. People all over this world say people all over this world, they're looking for Jesus.